flow between those and everything. Fish bowl. This is how this is how you film the inside of the firebox. Without murdering the, the camera. What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we're going to take an extended look at firing using the fishbowl cam that we've seen before. Previously we just got oohs and ahs of what the fire could do while the locomotive is working around the railroad, but we've never gotten to see what happens as the train works and how the fire changes and where coal gets added to. So in this video I'm going to be shoveling coal into the 491, and Dusty's going to be helping with the rest of the firing so I can focus on filming. Safety first, everyone. And in between scoops and at different points on the railroad, we're gonna shove the GoPro into the firebox using the fishbowl and see what the fire looks like and see what we can learn. Let's get into it. Here we can see the fire while we're sitting in station. You can see that there is fresh coal scattered about the box that was the last coal that was added in before we stopped. You can see the biggest flames in the back right and all the way up at the front by the tube sheet and where the arch brick you can see is, there's a fair amount of fire as the fire bed's the deepest there, but all across the middle and the middle left is all dead. And so that's the stuff that we need to fix before the train departs the station. We're about five minutes out, so I'm gonna start putting some stuff in here. Look at that wind up. Just because these scoops look like they're going super far forward doesn't mean that they're going all the way to the front. You gotta remember how big the firebox of the K37 is. It's a long way up to those front corners. As well, if you watch the way that the shovel is pointed and also the way that it's tilted at the end of each scoop, you can see where the coal is going to go, whether it's going to go to the left, center, or to the right, and how far. And you also need to make sure you check those back corners. They're hard to see just by yourself as well with the camera, so make sure you get some coal back there too before you get rolling, because they're really easy to forget about. Last time we looked into the fire, there was a lot of gray, ashy, dead coal. And now you can see there's lots of dark, fresh coal that has not lit yet. And it's also a little hard to see, and that's not any fogging up on the fishbowl itself. That's actually just the smoke coming up through the coal and through the grates of the fire itself. As we get a little bit more draft going, that'll clear up and we'll actually be able to see what's going on. That's one of the most challenging things about firing is actually being able to see the fire. <laughs> well, if you're firing that thing out on the road, 100%. But around here, and now that, I mean, when we got her treated and cleaned out so much junk, yeah, I mean, she steams ridiculously now. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. Great was in a superheater that doesn't leak. Made a huge difference too. On this one, yeah. yeah. Or sorry, 346. Yeah. So you open it with the valve, the valve, and you can take care of the valve. You can use that whenever you want, as long as there's air pressure. Right. And then when there's no air, you have to use the handle. Right. But a lot of times when you're just looking, mm -hmm. it's yeah. nice to just use I just this. I open the door all the way. Try to lose all or nothing. Yeah. Right. You can you can try and tap dance it a little bit. All right. But right now I thought it because it's so low to the floor, I thought it was you, you know needed to be up so you can kick it down, but it's not. It's no, it's just it's just air pressure. It's just an air pressure. I forgot it. It's pressure. Yeah, so there's an air cylinder that yeah. actuates right there, and uh, kind of the cylinder presses up, and that's what this guard is yeah. for. And then sometimes it comes back, and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, it gets a little bit of coal dust and stuff in there. Yep. It's a little stiff. That, the, the economy style clamshell doors, I mean, that's what most of the rear grand stuff had, probably because it was cheap. Mm -hmm. But the amount of linkage like this, that amount of, I mean, it's, they're, they're very intricate and fun, but butterflies, the ones that are just two halves yeah. that just open with one cylinder right. and two gears, so much better, so much nicer. Sure. There's no, oh, we need to align the two halves of the, the Pepsi logo oh. to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> smoking out the cab. <laughs> The wind is not helping the situation of the draft. We're smoking in the woods. And it's not coming at you. Yeah. Like it was for me this morning when we looked up the train. 
If you wanted to see the effects of the blower, here you go. Here's no blower. Here's blower. Notice how much shorter the flames are with the blower on. The fire is actually burning faster, and so the flames lick less high, because everything's burning more quickly. And as well, the smoke is cleared, and we can see that a lot of the fire isn't lit, which, well, we need to fix, huh? Little of this fire is just dead at the moment, so I need to deal with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm adding more coal, and for one thing, to help roll existing coal into the dead spot, and as well to help fill out the fire mass in that area, because it was a little uneven. And we can see with the fire cam one more time that it's already started to light on the left side, and with the blower still rolling, it'll light the rest of the way. We put Malco in it. We did the first boiler wash. We pulled six five-gallon buckets full of junk out of the boiler. I love how Dusty and I both go for the bell there, and that this is a clip filmed with the Huber 6 on the engine. That's my whistle. You can see with the increased velocity over the top of the stack, it's already drawing a bit of a vacuum smoothly, just like the blower. And as it starts chuffing, you can see the fire start to pulse, and that dead spot is all lit. With K37s, one scoop of coal is never one, it's almost always two. And there was just a couple light spots that weren't quite as bright as I needed, so I added a little more coal. So right about here is almost the summit of the railroad, and this is on the 4% side, going this way, counterclockwise. And so Jeff's going to shut back on the throttle, and we're going to take a look at the fire once the engine stops chuffing. You can see now that the engine's chuffing a little bit less hard than last time. The fire is a little bit slower, and the flames go a little bit higher. And you can see a little bit more as well. And now that he's shut off entirely, it's just a rolling big fire with lots of tall flames everywhere. It's really hard to see. Way up on that front right. And now with a little bit more coal on the fire, things have evened out, and those big giant flames are literally everywhere. Yeah, it looks like hell in there, doesn't it? Now almost a minute later, we're almost at the bottom of the hill, so let's check it one more time. We can see now that the fire has got less draft, the flames are smaller, and we need a little bit more coal in those two low spots. Almost all the way at the back on the right, and right in front of the door.
getting on to the uphill here. Can already see there's more draft and we have more fire where we added the coal. That's good. And she starts chuffing and there's the rhythm of the flames. This is some of the coolest stuff, guys. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. <laughs> The little itty bitty black dots you can see are actually cinders flying up through the fire. It's amazing they get caught. And that uh, line coming across the screen is the fishbowl cracking. Oops. This is one of the main reasons I like to watch the fire right as the engine starts working. When you're drifting and it's lazy like this, it's really hard to see. So as I said, this is the last run of the day. And the secret of the last run of the day is you want to make sure the fire is dying out by the time you get to the station so that it's just barely still there. So that when you get over to the shop, you don't have to wait for the fire to cool down forever and you fill the engine full of water. So we're going to try not to add any more coal if we can avoid it on the last lap. But you still need to make sure that you're not drawing any cold air into the firebox. So if you got to add it, you got to add it. And that's a thing of beauty. Pretty level all the way across, even flames all the way across just about. That's pretty. Here we are at the top of the last hill. Great looking fire, still have steam. She's gonna be ready to go to bed. Here we are drifting at the top of the hill. You can see that the fire is huge, impossible to read. And here we jump to just pulling into the station stop. And you can see how different it is now that all the gases have dissipated and the draft has gone away. But the fire is still just completely level, looks beautiful, and it would be ready for another run with some more coal, or it's great to take the engine and put it to bed. 
So as we stop, there's no more airflow over the top of the stack, so the draft goes away. We get smoke out the door, so I asked Dusty to open the blower, and look at how much you can see when the blower turns on. It goes from a smoky nightmare to completely clean, super quick. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of steam locomotive firing science on this day. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We cracked the glass. Yeah, the water's so cold, they're getting kind of warm. It's, uh, it's not warm at all, but it's, it's room temp, it's not cold, it was ice cold earlier.